himself mighty and to show himself strong in our lives and because of that he deserves the glory he deserves the honor and he deserves the praise amen 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 well it's good to be in the house of the lord one more time don't 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 sit don't sit don't sit take a minute and go give somebody a hug in Jesus' name. Let them know how glad you are to see them in Jesus' name. long break right but now it's time to get back in line and get back in the grind amen so that we might study to show ourselves approved that we would be workmen work women <laughs> needing not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth amen um, just a few announcements I'd like to share with you, and then we're gonna jump right in to the word. Want to remind uh, all of the women? I think they're registering. You can register even tonight. Amen. You can register uh, after Bible study for our upcoming uh, Infinite Power 2018 Women's Conference. We are looking for forward to an amazing time in the Lord and we want you we want to encourage you to take advantage of early bird registration how about that okay and then we're gonna have our kickoff on September the 28th we have so many fun things planned and I know a lot of people are like oh I gotta wear pajamas I don't want to you don't have to wear pajamas okay I hope that helps 
just come real casual and comfortable because we're going to have a lot of fun that night, okay? So make sure you sign up. Uh, we want to encourage all of our young people. This, uh, the fourth uh, weekend in the month, we're going to have our uh, Youth Impact Weekend, and so we want all of our young people to get signed up for that. And then our men's ministry, this coming Friday, they're going to have uh, their Real Talk session. This is going to be on getting the victory over anger. And then next month, which is Domestic Violence Month, we're going to have part two, and that is going to uh, be on the theme, Deconstructing Dominance. Amen? Amen. So we want all the men to prepare your hearts for that. All right. Let's jump on in. Jump on in. So we know that Pastor uh, started on the first Sunday of this uh, month on the series on Psalm, the Psalms. And our first Psalm was Psalm 23. And we're going to dig in a little bit deeper on that this evening. Psalm 23. When you think about Psalm 23, tell me what are some of the initial thoughts that come to your mind when you think about this psalm? Intimacy. Very good. Assurance. It's a psalm of assurance. It's a psalm of intimacy. What else? Say it one more time. Protection. Okay, and I heard no fear. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Sure. Guidance. Very good, Tamika. What else? Say it again. Assurance. Okay. Uh, Reverend Smith said that one, but probably not uh, loud enough. Assurance. Okay. Anybody else? Comfort. Okay. Anybody else? provision. Man, we can go home. I know y'all. I know y'all had a long day. No. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Our Bible um, students, and, and we know that because Psalm 23 is probably we wanted the first Psalms. How many, uh, that was the first Psalm that you memorized? Yeah, that was the first, even as a, a young child, that was the Psalm that we learned, and we were very much uh, connected to in the incubative stages of our Christian walk. And part of that is because it really is about relationship, right? Understanding our relationship with God. And so the psalmist wrote, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life life long. Psalm 23. This is a pastoral uh, psalm, a psalm of serenity and all of the other uh, things that you called out um, earlier. And certainly we know that it is among the most notable because it displays all of the things that we talked about, assurance, comfort, peace, right? Particularly in difficult times. And I know that we have come to understand, basically because you're here in Bible study, that you know that it is the word that sustains and keeps us 
and undergirds us and encourages us and propels us, right, to keep on keeping on even in the midst of hard times. David's testimony is a testimony of trust, right? How many know that we have to come to a place that we can trust God even when we can't trace God? We have to learn that God is, right? When we think about the book of uh, Exodus and Moses, when he was called to a tremendous work, right? He had to lead people. And how many know leading people? is a tremendous work, right? You experience it on your jobs, your families, certainly in the church, all across the board. When you are responsible for people, it is a tremendous work. And it was when uh, Moses, in, who was intimidated, he was fearful, he was doubtful, of his ability to manage the assignment that was before him. He had issues with speaking before people, right? And he went before God and God is saying, go, right, just go. And Moses is, okay, but you know how we do when God gives us an assignment. We got all kinds of questions. Where do I go? When do I go? How do I go? What am I gonna do when I get there? What am I gonna say when they say, right? And so he finally says to him, well, when, when they ask me, who sent me? What am I to say? And I know that, you know, we think God is gentle all the time, but I just believe that, you know, Moses kind of pressed his nerve a little bit. And he finally said, I am that I am. So when you go, just tell them that I am sent you right and so when you think about even that statement what comes to mind about the message that God was trying to relay to Moses in that moment anybody confidence just go because I am is with you anybody else there it is I'm all that you need me to be. What's it saying to you, Jewel? No matter what's going on, I'm going to be there. And if I've sent you, because how many know if where God guides, he provides. God is not going to task us to do things that we can do on our own. Amen. The things, the assignments, and the purpose, and the plans that God has for us requires a supernatural strength, right? So when you get caught up in yourself, and sometimes that's what we do, we forget that we serve a God who is Alpha and Omega. We're talking about who God is, right? That he is the beginning and the end. I, 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 I often think about how often God in his word has to remind us of who he is, right? Who can know my mind and who can be my counselor, right? I'm the one that formed the heaven and the earth. I'm the one that separated the waters from the land. I'm the one who created the birds and gave the birds their chirp and, and gave the cow its moo. Right? Come on, y'all. The cat, it's meow. The dog, it's bark. It's, it's God. And then it's God who breathed on us and gave us life. And more importantly, without God. Right? We would not have the breath of life. How often do we take uh, for granted when we wake up in the morning, right, that it's God who woke us up, that we didn't do anything 
to deserve to see a brand new day, right? We didn't earn a brand new day, but he looked upon our lowly estate and he had mercy upon us and he whispered in our ear, child, get up and experience a brand new day, brand new possibilities, brand new opportunities, right? What a mighty God we serve. When I uh, thought about this particular passage, it brought to mind a book that I read by life coach Marie Forleo. I don't know if any of you are familiar with her. Anybody familiar with Marie Forleo? No. Okay. All right. So let me say right now, this is not by way of suggestive reading. It's just a reference. Okay. <laughs> okay. Had to get that out. So the book that I read in part was entitled Make Every Man Want You. How to be irresistible, so irresistible. Look at Reverend Smith's face. Make every man want you. How to be so irresistible you barely keep from dating yourself. Don't take that up with the singles, okay. So it was interesting because the mantra and affirmation that she encourages women to embrace is my isness, is my business, right? That's the whole, you know, that's the sticky statement of her book. My isness is my my business. And on the outset, she, well, you know, she's not a Christian writer. I want you all to know that. You probably figured that out already. But as I read, I enjoy her. She's an entrepreneur. She has, you know, good tips for empowerment and all. So don't judge. You know, my motto is chew up the meat and spit out the bones. Okay? Okay. So the meat for me was given by the Holy Spirit because whenever I read, I ask God, reveal to me what it is that you want me to see. And so what he said to me was that really it's not about your isness, but it's about my isness. So make my isness your business and everything will be all right. right. Amen. Right. And so when we think about the isness of God, how, how does God's presence the presence of God, the fact that God is, how is that made manifest in your life on a daily basis? Wasn't rhetorical. By giving thanks. Okay. Okay. What? Tell me about the isness of God. Anybody? Say it again, Hazel. It overpowers, okay, the essence of God overpowers you. Can you say more? Can you, can somebody give Hazel a mic? Can we get her a mic? So. Daily, well, let me say, before my feet hit the floor, I read God's word. So, it's like, he takes over my day because that's how I started my day. That's not to say that things don't go south during the day. But I can always think about God and he brings me back. So I'm never really out of the reality of it. It gets hard and I struggle and I get tired. But God just overpowers me and says, I got you. I did not put you in a place where I'm not carrying you. And sometimes I'm so tired and beat down, I literally feel God's carrying me. So that's what I mean when I say his isness overpowers me. Very good. Anybody else? How do you make God's isness your business how is that manifested in your your daily walk how does he show up in 
in our lives? How does he make his presence known? Okay. Okay. Okay, get as loud as you can get. Okay. <laughs> So this will help. When we pass the mic, it's also going to help those who may be viewing online as well. Okay. So thank you. Thanks. For me, he always places the right people in my path at the right time. Okay. So okay. That's it. And that's good because God works. How many know God works through human agency to accomplish his will on, on the earth? Amen. So he's working through other people to impact you, and he's working through you to impact other people. Amen? Anybody else? The isness of God. Don't be shy. He guides my decision making he throughout the day. He guides decision making. Amen. For amen from day to day. Moment to moment. How many know you need him to guide you from moment to moment? Right. Anybody else, Reverend Smith, you had? I was going to say our interaction, uh, my interaction all day long. I'm, I'm, he, he's always speaking to me. So sometimes he said, you need to be quiet. <laughs> Hold your peace. <laughs> he, sometimes he said, look, don't show it. <laughs> Hold your face. <laughs> sometimes he said, just listen. Just listen. You know, sometimes you want to come. He said, just listen. Mm -hmm. I learned you ain't got to clap back every time somebody clap at you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's wisdom right there. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Reverend Smith. He guides me. Um, I had a situation today where someone um, had said something that kind of hurt my feelings. So I said, well, Lord, what do I say? Do I say anything? And he he just told me to peace be still. So I'm walking back and forth as I kept saying, peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. And I never said a word back. Normally, you know, we ready to just snap back when someone says something that hurts our feelings. But I just said, Lord, you know, what, what should I do? And that's good because if you pause, and I think that's really helpful for somebody. Amen. When we're talking about what's the redemptive value and what message God is trying to send us, you don't have to have an answer for everything. And what I heard both this beautiful young lady here and Reverend Smith both say is that I ask God, right? Because we need, how many know, you know, we, we need the Lord to guide us every day, right? And this is why we pray. See, we figure, you know, praying is always, you know, getting down on the Father, I stretch, you know. But praying is, Lord, what would you have me to do? That's a prayer. A prayer is, Lord, bridle my tongue. Right? <laughs> Lord, keep me right now. Right? And as we have our conversations and we talk to God, he brings us. He brings us back around and he guides us. Anybody else? Talking about the isness of God. Here we go. Truly, he gives me grace and mercy every day. And that's the truth. I mean, just like little simple things that might make a mistake at work and you think, oh my gosh, I got to go tell my supervisor I did this, you know. And she's like, oh, it's okay. We'll just fix it. I'm thinking, Thank you, God. You know, it's just little things like that that, um, that, that he shows up for me. He's my, my business. Well, the good thing is you were willing to admit that you made a mistake. See, that's the first step. <laughs> Some folk like to hide it and, you know, try and bury it under a bushel and try and cover that stuff up. And everything comes out in a wash. So you might as well go ahead and put it out there. That's the noble thing to do. That's the honorable thing to do, right? That we, we are able to admit, hey, you know what? I blew this, right? And then you get, God goes before you, right, to give you the mercy that you need in the time of need. That's the kind of God we serve. Anybody else? 
All right, to make our mind. Oh, okay, thank you, Jane. Minister Dorn. I think also um, in the beauty of nature, because um, I take a walk every morning, and the interesting thing is that, um, you know, you think about the rose that grows in c concrete, but you look at these weeds, like regardless of what happens, the weather, storms being stepped on, they continue to rise and they continue to grow. Regardless, you know, you put, try to put herbicide on them, they still grow. And it just reminds me of resiliency, you know, ma no matter what we go through, like God is still there to pick us up and bring us through. So if a we can do it, so can we. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was uh, today watching the news and certainly we want to make sure that we keep lifted, lift those who are in the path and in the eye of the storm. And they did a little story about the, the horses um, that, that were on the Outer Banks and they have this just amazing history. They were telling about the horses and they said, well, what are you gonna do, you know, about them being in the midst of the storm? And I thought it was interesting that the mayor of that particular city said, you know, they're, they're in their habitat. We leave them in their habitat and they're very well equipped to, to navigate the storms. They know what to do. They know where to go. They're in their community. It was just so amazing to watch. And so like you said, in nature and in God's creation, how, how he doesn't miss one little detail. Sometimes we forget that about God, that God knows all, he sees all, and he has every single solitary thing, every detail, uh, it's all covered, right? And so when we don't know, and when we don't understand, and when we can't figure it out, and yes, in our frailty, right? We, we do make mistakes. And to ask God in everything, Lord, you know, take care of me, guide me. Um, um, in, the, in the Gospels, and Luke, I believe it's in both Luke and Matthew, but the question is, consider the lilies, right? They don't toil, they don't spin, and, and even with all of that, they're adorned and arrayed, right? And so if God considers the lily, how much more do we think he considers us? And I know there are times when things don't look, um, look good, when things are difficult, but I think those are times that are beneficial to us as well, where God is tuning us and pruning us and shaping us. He never promised that it was going to be easy, right? He never promised that we weren't going to come into difficult times and challenging uh, things, whether it's uh, um, trouble in our homes, trouble on our jobs, physical uh, issues with our body, health issues, all of these things. Nothing is foreign to God, right? And when it comes upon us, we have this kind of like, oh, my God, you know, what is this? because it's new to us, but there's nothing new to God. Amen? So when I thought about the isness of God, you know, a couple of um, scriptures that he, he laid on my heart, and, and all of this came out of me reading Maria's book, because I'm like, okay, my isness, I, I, I ain't even got time, <laughs> I got time for my isness, so I'm going to make... God's isness, my business. And so I just went through these couple of scriptures that I'm going to go through just a few, and then we're going to hop right on into dissecting Psalm 23. But the first one is Deuteronomy 4.24. And in each of these, you'll find is. God is. So Deuteronomy 4.24 says, For the Lord your God is a devouring fire, a jealous God. He's a jealous God. Amen? He said it in his word that you, 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 I'm not going to have you to have any other gods before me. 
and it's incumbent for all of us to figure out what are we making our gods, whether it's ourselves, especially in this self-indulgent season of life that we're in. You know, if I see another selfie, I'm going to scream. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Ah, ah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> enough is enough. All right? He's a jealous guy. And I'm, you know, you can take, take pictures, you know, capture the moment and enjoy the moment. But just don't get over absorbed with yourself, okay? Get over yourself so you can make his business your business. He's a jealous guy. Deuteronomy 9.3 says, Know then today that the Lord your God is the one who crosses over before you. As a devouring fire, he will defeat them and subdue them before you so that you may dispossess and destroy quickly as the Lord has promised you. Now that says a whole lot right there that he's a promise keeper, right? God doesn't, he's not slack on his promises if God said it. It's going to come to pass. And when we're in the dark places, when we're in the valleys of life, it's so important to know that he is crossing over. He's already crossed over before us. Amen? There's nothing that we could go through that God has not already paved the way. Deuteronomy 10, 17, for the Lord your God is God of God. And Lord of Lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribes. Y'all getting a picture of our God? 2 Samuel 22, 32 through 34. For who is God but the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? The God who has girded me with strength has opened wide my path. He made my feet like feet of a deer, and he set me secure on heights. Right? We getting a picture of our God? This is our God we're talking about. Deuteronomy 20 and 1, when you go out to war against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Come on, somebody. No matter how big the enemy is, appears, right? Our God, he is the one. Oh my gosh. You know, when you think about that, because warfare is real in the life of the child of God. And if, we, if we're not alert and vigilant, but most importantly, if we don't understand that we're, at, no matter how big it seems, no, how, no matter how big the, the demons seem, the presence seem, the forces seem, knowing that God is greater, God is higher, and we have to constantly remind ourselves of that. Amen? Because if not, we'll be consumed. Has there anybody, is there anybody who's ever almost been consumed by an attack of the enemy? Anybody willing to be confessional and tell the truth about it? No? No. I know it's rough, isn't it? It's rough. It's rough. It's okay. God knows. That's a good thing. God knows, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got it all taken care of. Psalm 46.1. Now, you might have 46.4 on your sheet. That was a typo. 
says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I love that. I always go back to that sermon that Pastor preached when he first came. And he got up and he said, God's in trouble. The, the, the sermon, my sermon title, uh, God's in trouble. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> if God's in trouble, we, in trouble. we are in trouble. <laughs> But I'm telling you, he preached that thing. And he, he helped us to know and understand that he's in it all. Right? And so it's incumbent upon the child of God to, to make sure that in every situation, we ask that one question. God, show me you in this circumstance. God, show me you. Right? Show me what you want me to see. Show me what you want me to do because I know that whatever you allowed, amen, mm -hmm. it's all working together for what? For good. For who? For those who love the Lord. And it ain't working good for everybody. Some people you just need to look at. You know when people acting crazy, you see it's all this craziness now. It's just like all this craziness. And I'm thinking in my mind, you know, that ain't going to turn out good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really looking good for you, right? But to know that it's working together for my good because I love the Lord and I know that I am the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. That's so comforting. That's, that's such an assurance, right? It gives us great peace to know that he's working it out for our good. So when we look at Psalm 23, the first verse, as David uh, reflects on his shepherding years, remember that David as a young boy was a shepherd. And the first thing I thought about when I, I looked at this first verse, when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I thought about the fact that God uses God doesn't waste anything, right? He doesn't waste anything. Sometimes we're doing, I'm hoping I'm helping somebody, especially some young people, and um, sometimes we're in positions, and especially when it comes to serving, because serving has become passe, and people struggle with that anymore. And, and, and I think that when we, when we recognize and realize that whatever we, wherever we are right now, it's working together, right? It's, it's all for purpose. It's all leading to, to promise. God doesn't waste anything. So all of that time that, that David as a young boy uh, spent watching the sheep and, and being vigilant and disciplined in his assignment, he, he came to understand what it meant to be a shepherd. And so he says, the Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. And when we think about this, the first thing we see is that the Lord provides. Yes. That's the first thing that we want to make sure that we see. That the Lord God is Jehovah Jireh. He is our Lord God that provides. Right? And it's good to know that because there are times when we don't know. And it's not all about, when we talk about provision, we always think monetary provision. Um, but it's not just that. But he does that too. Right? Where when we were talking, we had a wonderful conversation with Pastor Coates on Sunday. We were doing some reflecting and just going back and we were just thinking about how our grandparents and how our parents and grandparents, how they just made something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you go in the refrigerator, the re refrigerator's empty, but you still look on the stove, and there's a big old pot of something, you know, brewing, cooking, right? Because they were able to, to make something out of nothing. They didn't worry. They didn't worry about things like we tend to worry now. And I wonder what made this. And I think when you, have, when, when you have to rely upon God, 
daily, right, for your sustenance, when you have to rely upon God for everything, it, it creates a level of dependence that relieves you from the worry, right? I think oftentimes when we get too comfortable and we get too, we take so many things for granted. I sat there today and I was looking at the news and I'm looking at people having to evacuate and people having to, and we, you know, people are saying, oh, they're going to stay. If they stay, um, they're going to have to give the next of kin, you know, because they may perish was, you know, what the thought was. And... <clears throat> Then the commentators started to reflect on why was it that some people were staying, right? And we don't really think about it. You know, like, hey, why don't you get up and you go? And people, one lady was like, I don't have a car. How am I going to go? I don't have a, I don't have a vehicle. And then I started thinking about people who were incapacitated. Mm. People who did not, not only do I not have a car, but I don't have anywhere to go. Where, where am I going to go? It was all of these questions and things that were coming, coming to the surface. And it just really made me think about, gosh, what we take for granted. Yeah. Yeah. What we take for granted. Water. Electricity. The basic things in life that we take for granted. Amen? And, and that's because... We serve a God who, who provides. Mm -hmm. But we need, that's important in this life that we understand that. Isaiah 40 and 11 says, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. Mm. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, Hazel, and gently lead the mother sheep. All right. So even when we're tired, even when we can't, taken anymore even when we've done all that we know to do we know that we serve a God who picks us up who rocks us right he rocks us in his arms when we give it all over to God how we can find peace even in the midst of the most violent storm right the next thing we see in the second verse in Psalm 23 is, and we heard this earlier, that the Lord guides, right? He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. And isn't it great to know that we serve a God who leads and guides us if we allow him? Now, in what ways can we allow God to guide us? Anybody? Being submissive, coming under, right? His lordship and his leadership. Being submissive. Anybody else? Hearing? Hearing him. Being, being attentive to the voice of God. Right? You remember Elijah when he was going through and he was saying, I looked for him in the wind and I looked for him in the storm and I looked for him in the fire. And the, but then he came to me in what? A still, small voice. And if we're alert, right? When we look around, Tamika, and we look at the the grass and the weeds and the flowers and the birds and when we look in every situation and circumstances and we're alert and attentive God right y'all remember the color purple mm -hmm. can't you sleep at night <laughs> right <laughs> you wonder why God is trying to tell you something God is trying to tell you something but you're not going to get it if you're not attentive Anybody else? In what ways does he make us to lie down by the still waters? By reading his word. By reading his word. I heard something else. By the Holy Spirit, right? He gave us. What a privilege and an honor that we have 
the, the presence of the living God in us. He dwells in us. Right? And so we always walk around telling something told me. No. <laughs> that wasn't something. <laughs> right? God. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me. I am his own. Right? He guides. Isaiah 58 and 11 says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your need in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water never fails. Do you get that imagery? That when we allow God to guide us. That we'll find the peace that we need. We'll get the endurance that we need. We'll get the rest. Come on, somebody, somebody in here today needs sweet rest. Come on, you, you're not sleeping at night. You don't have the peace that you need. You have a, 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 a mind racing spirit. You all always mind rumbling, 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 always something going on, right? God wants us to get sweet rest. Amen. John 16 and 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, mm -hmm. come on somebody, mm -hmm. he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. All right. Mm. My God. Psalm 23 and 3 says, he restores my soul. And he leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Right? Anybody ever been in need of restoration? Anybody ever been in need of having your soul restored? Right? What are some of the things that lead us to that place where we need to have our soul restored? What are some of the things that come to mind? Hazel. Ah. When you've been wronged wow. by someone That's and good. um you kind of like lose mm. your faith in man and and you you have to just really go in prayer and say right. lord i can't do this i need you right, right now That's and good. god will restore you and show you That's first good. of all you had no business having faith in man I know that's right. your right. faith is supposed all to right. be in the lord and sometimes he just has to give you that little wake-up call right right all right amen uh, that is so true. Uh, I, the song came to mind that they used to sing in the country, put your trust in Jesus because he won't fail, right? Because man will disappoint us. And I think, you know, every now and then the times that I've been disappointed and wronged, you know, by man, I've always been, it, it is restoring because it restores my um submission and reliance upon God because you're right you know a lot of times we put more into people than we should I think it's good to have relationships it's good to don't get me wrong it's good to have um, trusted counsel and all these things but I think some of us have been so devastated in relationships because we have relied too much on man and when you rely too much on man then it makes the heartbreak um the the betrayal you know people people um are fallible it's just it, it's just it is what it is mm -hmm. right and once we get once we understand that then it gives us a greater level of peace right it allows us, and then it positions us really to Hazel as well to forgive for forgiveness. Now, forgiveness don't mean fool. All right. Right? 
Y'all feel me? Okay. So you don't, forgiveness may mean that, that, that the violator, if you will, or the betrayer, if you will, may have relieved themselves of the front row seat in your life. All right. You, you, you know where I'm coming from. So you have to be why God gives you wisdom and he gives you understanding. And so if he shows you and God will show you, I asked him, I started praying, God bless my encounters, ordain my encounters. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't let me don't let me choose unless you show me, unless you tell me this is someone who I want, you know, in your life and in your inner circle. Um, in your space and there'll be people who will be there to challenge you and test you and prune you and tune you right everybody in there is not gonna be you know th thrilly fuzzy warm and fuzzy right every relationship even the ones that he the ones that he ordains all right maybe to challenge you maybe to provoke you who knows? All right. That was good, wasn't it? Very good. That was good. That was good to me. Even if it wasn't good to you. <laughs> yeah, you got to have some people going to provoke you. And then one day, it may not be in this moment, but one day you're going to tell them thank you. Because you helped mature me. Right? You helped strengthen my faith. I grew because of my encounter with you. Amen. All right. All right. He restores our soul. He, the Lord leads and directs. Psalm, uh, in Psalm 23 and 3, what it, it's, he restores and then he leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Right? Mm -hmm. And we see in Psalm 16 and 11, it says, you show me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy. That was Dr. Stanley's favorite song, right? He used to pray that all the time. In your, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Isn't that something? When you, when you hear the word of God, it should cause us. Because, you know, the enemy doesn't want us to get this word. You know that, right? The enemy doesn't want us to get this word. And so he, he knows, because he knows some things that we don't know. Because now remember, he was in the presence of the Lord. And he blew it, right? Yes. He lost his front, front seat, front no. row seat. Right. <laughs> okay, that's not funny. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. He lost his front yeah. row seat, right? He got a fire fixed for him. His end is fixed, and, and, and he's jealous now, right? He's jealous because God gave us a song that the angels can't even sing. We've been washed in the blood, right? We've been redeemed. What a joy to know that. But the Lord leads us, mm -hmm. and this is so important that we get to a place where we are hearing the voice of God, and we're moving. We're moving when he says move because he's leading us. When he says go, we have to get to a place where we go. We have to stop. I have my own, you know, place and testimony and, 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 and lessons that I have learned from, from waiting. Okay. Now, that was a polite way of saying procrastination, but let's just call it out. Let's call the demon out for what it is. Procrastination. When God says move, he wants a people who are in a place that we move just like that. Right? When he says move, we need to move. If he says Pick up the phone. Here we go. Something told me to call you. You know, we, we go through that all of the time, whether it is go, go over to the hospital, go see so-and-so, 
God is moving. God, he, we're his ambassadors. He's moving us. He's telling us what to do. He's directing us. Going over to the hospital. Pick up the phone and call so-and-so. Uh, Miss Jamie needs a piece of money. Go give her a couple dollars. I mean, he does all of that. Strangers, you know, go fill that gas tank. And if it's something that's too strange for us, if we can't relate to it, if we can't connect to it, we don't do it. Go over and say hi to Miss So-and-so. Go give so-and-so a hug. Go sit over there. Don't get so comfortable in the space that you're in. And I think when we start to loosen the reins All right. of our level of comfort, because that's the space we dwell in, whatever makes us comfortable. You know, we got our favorite seat. <laughs> we got our favorite position. We got our favorite show. We got everything our favorite, and we kind of step favorite food, right? We don't want to do things that are different. We, we don't want to experience things that are different. And God is always up to new and amazing and wonderful things. How many of you has ever heard God tell you to move? I know you have, Dream, and do something unusual. Well, you're mantra is just do it so uh, I'm preaching to the choir here but and, and you you just stepped on out and you did it and the 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 outcome was just amazing either it was the reaction you know of the person who you did a favor for and to you it was really no big deal in your obedience but they were floored at your kindness they were floored at your awareness how many have you have done something and you, God told you do whatever it is and you do it and the person then says, oh gosh, you don't know how bad I needed whatever. And you're like, wow. Doesn't it feel good though when you're obedient? Yes. Anybody have had experience where you've been obedient to God's unction and God's leading and there's just been so much joy when you follow that? Similarly, have you ever been disobedient mm. and experienced the, the heartbreak and the regret, right? And the disappointment of not following through. When he says, go, go see so-and-so and you put it off and then you get that dreaded call. So-and-so passed today. And you're like, he told me three days ago to go see him and I didn't go, right? God leads and he directs. Psalm 37, 23 says, Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Yes. Let me hasten. 23 and 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord protects. And I heard somebody call that out earlier, acknowledging that God is our protector. Anybody been in a situation and, and it was like really, really crazy and, and you found that God just showed up? and showed himself mighty and strong as your source of protection, right? God has a way. He has legions of angels. Isn't it a joy to know that you have an angel who is assigned to you? I remember as a child, I, and everybody else probably had them too. Did you all have the, the picture of the angel and the bridge, that was over my bed. It was a picture of, it was two of them. And they were angels, and one was watching the little girl go over a bridge. Nobody else had that but me? See, my parents. I just thank God for my parents. <laughs> they are angels all night and all day, watching over me. Yeah, but it was just this beautiful, and, and you know, it did give me comfort. To know that even in the dark places, there's nowhere that we can go that God 
is not watching over us. That God does not have angels as a hedge of protection round about us. And I think it's so important for us to acknowledge the presence of angels. He has warring angels. There are angels on the front line that are fighting your battle. Every time the enemy is shooting those, those darts, right? God, the fiery darts. God has angels in place to block those darts, to shield and protect us. You know, you've been in your car and uh, you, you s avoided an accident and to this day you still can't say how that car got, how you got out of the way or that car got out of the way or something. You don't know how it happened because it was supernatural. Mm -hmm. And I know we get, ooh, that's spooky. Spooky my foot. You better be grateful for them angels <laughs> that are watching over you as you come and as you go. Amen. Thank God for his angels. He protects us. Second Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Ooh, Jesus. He protects those that are his. And that's why the, you know, the enemy, what he does is he just tries to irritate the dickens out of us because he can't do anything else. Mm -hmm. Right? He can't do anything else. Right. So he, he tries to create situations and circumstances and uh, makes things uh, aggravating and creates adversarial um, situations just to get you to turn your eyes off of God. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important for us, no matter what, yea, though I walk, I might be walking, but it ain't nothing but a shadow. Shadow ain't never hurt nobody. He might scare you to death. <laughs> but a shadow can't hurt you. Yes. Right? And so we have to make sure that we understand that he is there to protect us. And then Psalm 23 and 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. And I think God, gave, uh, Pastor gave us a very um, uh, good illustration of that when he talked about the fighter and how the fighters were uh, anointed, their bodies were anointed with oil before they went into battle so that they would be so slippery that they would not be able to be held captive by the enemy. Amen? And that's what he does. He prepares a table before us and our enemy our enemies see that that's why you got haters right i mean it's real they see the god in you and that's 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 troubling to the one who doesn't have him amen psalm 11 and 5 says the lord tests the righteous and the wicked and his soul hates the lover of violence and when we talk about preparation, I think this is really important because there's a book out years ago, I read it, um, called The Assignment. It was very helpful for me in a season when I was really uh, processing my calling and trying to figure out what in the world was going on and just the seasons. And he talked about the seasons of our assignment. And in our assignment, you're going to have seasons of adversity. You're going to have seasons of obscurity. You're going to have seasons of wilderness. You're going to have seasons of warfare. He just talked about all of the seasons that we have to experience and go through in this life. And we have to be prepared for that. Amen. The calling that God has, the assignments that he has on our lives, there is no place for timidity. There's no space and place for um, being fearful, right? Paul told Timothy, God has not given you what? The spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen? So the things that we're experiencing, part of the preparation, amen, is going to be to build up our stamina, to build up our endurance. So affliction is necessary, right? Mm -hmm. um, when when uh, Jesus was baptized, 
immediately after God said, uh, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, he was immediately whisked into the wilderness to be tried by the enemy. 40 days, 40 nights. You're like, but God, you said you was pleased with me. Yeah, that's why you're there, right? I'm preparing you. He was preparing him for the journey. And then lastly, as we close, Psalm 23, 6, he says, Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. In Matthew 28 and 20, when, when Jesus was sending the disciples out, he told them to go ye therefore. And that's what he's saying to each and every one of you. That's what he's saying to me. That is what he's saying to you. You are not here just to occupy space. But you're here to represent me. You're here to be my ambassador. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what? Lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. Come on, let's give God some praise. And that is the Lord accompanies me. Let us stand to our feet. It's such a joy and an honor to know in a world and time like this that the Lord is indeed our shepherd. And for that reason, we don't have to want for a thing. We just have to go. We have to trust day to day, all along the way, knowing that he is our God. So as you go through the rest of this day, as you go through tomorrow, just think about the mantra, God's isness is my business. Amen. Make God's isness your business. Perhaps there's one this evening who does not know Jesus Christ in the free will pardoning of sin. Perhaps you don't know him as your personal Lord, Savior, and Shepherd of your life if that's you on tonight we want to offer christ to you he says behold i stand at the door and i knock and if there's any man that uh, opens up the door i'll come in and sup with him and he with me perhaps there's someone here tonight that you don't have a church home you don't have a place where you can go and grow in god's word and strengthen your faith for this journey and if you're seeking a church home we certainly want to share with you that mount enon's doors hang on hinges of love pastor Coates would love to be your pastor we would love to be your church family and so if that's you who does not have a church family home we want to invite you to come tonight is there one is there one well amen let us pray father god we just come before your presence tonight just to say thank you we thank you for your awesomeness we thank you for your greatness we thank you for your isness god we thank you for how you daily show your new mercies we thank you that your faithfulness is so great god we thank you that you are indeed our shepherd and you lead and you guide us, you keep us, you direct us, you rock us, you protect us, you prune us, you tune us, God. We thank you for being our shepherd. God, we ask that you would bless your people on tonight. You know what each of us stand in the need of. Some, some are in need of a healing, God. Some are in need of provision. Some are in need of guidance and direction, protection, God. We just ask that you meet us at the very point of our need. We'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. God, we ask a special blessing for all of those on the East Coast, oh God. All of those who are in the path and eye of the storm, oh God. That you would lead God and direct and protect them, oh God. 
We thank you for being so amazing, God. And then touch those, God. Give us guidance and direction that we might be help and we might be provision. And we, you would use us, oh God, to your glory. We'll be so careful to give you the praise, to give you the honor. It is in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we pray. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have an amazing evening.